I've seen it come up, you know, several feet, and it just, it just really depends. Now at five, an active weather weekend brings with it a chance for flooding. Along with snow in the mountains, it may be tricky to get around parts of western Washington. We have team coverage for you ahead. Yeah, one of those storms has already cleared and it leaves behind some pretty good rain and snow totals, but the next one is already on the way and that looks to also bring some significant rain. I'll break it all down in your first alert forecast. Something brought us back together and it was this gift. 15 years later, King 5 meets again with a man and his donor who gave him a second chance at life with a kidney transplant, why he is still calling it a Christmas miracle. Yeah! And our home team harvest campaign is underway. How you can help us raise 23 million meals for those facing food insecurity this holiday season. From snow to rain and flooding risks to wind, we are tracking an active weather weekend around western Washington. Our coverage tonight takes us from the Snohomish River to Snoqualmie Pass as our news and weather departments work to keep you informed. Thanks for choosing King 5 tonight. I'm Madison Wade. We have team coverage for you right now. King 5's Connor Board is tracking our flooding risk tonight as rainfall moves in. But we're going to start with meteorologist Leah Pizzetti and Leah, a lot to cover here. Walk us through the bigger picture. <sighs> Madison, let's just quickly recap everything we've gone through in the last 24 hours. A pretty potent storm brought us good rain and good snow. So here's a look at our 24 hour snow uh, in the mountains. Most of us seeing at least a foot of snow in the last 24 hours. So great snow totals there. Rain totals as well, incredibly significant. This is since midnight, our numbers since midnight and many areas approaching an inch of rain just since midnight alone. Shelton and Bremerton, SeaTac in the last 24 hours. So yesterday and today included hit about an inch of rain. So great rain as well. Gusty winds as you probably felt overnight or heard them at least uh, gusts up to 40, even surpassing 50 miles per hour in those overnight hours. Hoquiam saw a gust of 55 miles per hour. OK, so take a deep breath. <laughs> that is everything we saw as of right now. We are between storms, so some spotty showers are lingering, but it's a little bit of a break from the active weather. A live look outside Queen Anne showing that we do see those clear skies, but that is going to change here quickly. We have multiple atmospheric rivers heading our way. This is the first one that sets up uh, into Saturday and tomorrow morning. Then a stronger one is on the way. That is going to bring some pretty significant rainfall into next week. I'll have the totals coming up in a bit, but first I want to go to King 5 reporter Connor Board. And Connor, you've been talking to people who are in one of those flood prone areas, and now is the time to prepare because we have this active weather heading our way. Leah, that's right. Right now I'm next to the Snohomish River, which is expected to rise about 15 feet in the next few days. And due to that, people who live in flood prone areas are being asked to prepare. Holiday cheer is always to be expected in the city of Snohomish. I sure love it here. There's lots of love in their hearts here. Good folks. But this coming week, flooding is expected in flood prone areas of Snohomish County, with the Snohomish River expected to rise. Yeah, this river walk is just so beautiful. Palmer Bowden has lived in Snohomish County for 20 years. I've seen it come up, you know, several feet and it just it just really depends. You know, if it's the spring melt and this raining just right, then you'll see a lot of that. In the past, flooding has happened in downtown Snohomish with marks of where the river has elevated to on the wall. Kind of just shows off in 86 and then 95. And then 90. The Snohomish River is one of the rivers in western Washington that the National Weather Service is expecting to hit just below major flood stage by Tuesday or Wednesday. That rain on snow will help increase that runoff. Um, and so that will increase and you'll, you'll start to see those sharp rises on those area rivers. National Weather Service meteorologist Samantha Borth says rises in rivers will likely be seen starting Sunday and will increase the next few days as snow is expected to be followed by rain. And that's really going to increase our rises on area rivers. Um, as well as maybe provide some minor nuisance flooding on area roadways as well. But for now, Palmer says the river is low where he is at and holiday spirit is high. We don't have a lot of flooding, but what we have a lot of is Christmas spirit. 
The Snohomish County Department of Emergency Management is asking that people stay up to date with river and weather alerts and forecasts, and they'll also people avoid any roads that end up having water over them. In Snohomish, Connor Board, King 5 News. Connor, thank you. There's something else to watch for as the rain moves in. 20,000 properties are considered to be prone to landslides just in Seattle. One UW professor we spoke with says, look now for cracks in your foundation or soil movement and leave stumps and trees in the ground to stabilize the earth. He says once we start to see more than three inches of rain a day, the risk of a landslide will go up. Up to Snoqualmie Pass right now, taking a live look. WashDOT says the roads are bare with areas of snow and slush. Traction tires are advised right now. Oversized vehicles are not allowed on the pass. Now, this comes after the mess we saw yesterday after 30 semis that WashDOT says did not chain up then spun out. It caused a three hour closure on the pass. So if you are not prepared with traction tires or chains, it will cost you. Drivers could face a $500 fine. If you need a refresher on how to put chains on your tires, text the keyword chains to 206-448-4545. We'll send you a link with some tips. And with the tricky travel conditions expected all weekend, stick with King 5 for your weather coverage. You can download the King 5 app and see what to expect in your area. New tonight, the westbound lanes of I-90 are back open after a pursuit involving the state patrol and a DOI suspect. That pursuit started on Snoqualmie Pass after the driver was reportedly driving erratically. The pursuit went through Issaquah, then ended near East Mercer. The state patrol says the man had multiple warrants and no one was hurt. The arrivals drive at SeaTac Airport is back open following repairs. Earlier this week, a semi truck crashed into a bar that then warns drivers that their trucks are too tall. The force of this crash damaged the bar. This caused a big traffic headache for many people trying to catch flights home after Thanksgiving. Repair work was completed early this morning. One more traffic reminder for you, the 520 bridge is now closed for construction between I-5 and Clyde Hill. It will reopen at 5 a.m. on Monday. Every year is special to me. Every day, every day I wake up and say, God has given me another day. Thanks to Ann. Now to a follow-up story that we first brought you 15 years ago on King 5 about a Puyallup man in desperate need of a kidney donation during the holidays. Well, King 5's Brady Wakiyama caught up with him and his donor now celebrating the 15-year anniversary since the transplant operation. I believe it's been 15 years. I know. Well, he looks it. Oh. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Come here. An unbreakable bond started by a Christmas miracle that keeps on giving. 15 years of second chance at life on or during Christmas time. That's Larry Valdez sitting next to Ann Del Vecchio, who Larry considers his... My guardian angel. That's who she is. Because without this woman sitting right next to me, I wouldn't be here. I would not be here. And it's because of her and her kind, selfless, selflessness uh, gift. A gift that King unwrapped for you 15 years ago. At the time, Larry was in desperate need of a kidney transplant. I was probably maybe a couple months from dialysis. Larry and Ann had both worked with each other as ASL interpreters for a deaf youth program in Seattle in the 90s. After some years apart, they reconnected in the mid-2000s when Larry ran into Ann's husband at the time. He passed the message along to Ann that Larry needed a new kidney, which was perfect timing since Ann was in the process of donating her kidney as a benevolent donor at Swedish Medical Center. If I'm going to give my kidney away anyway, why wouldn't I give it to someone that, you know, I know and I know that needs one and is desperate for one. Since the operation, the two have continued to share many things, not just a kidney and plenty of laughs, but a genuine love for each other that will last a lifetime. 15 years, to huh? 15 more. Ooh, and many more. And that's a challenge, right? For both of us. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> Reporting for King 5 News, I'm Brady Wakayama. Oh my God. The winning streak continues. The Washington Huskies remain undefeated. UW is heading to the college football playoffs after beating the Oregon Ducks in last night's thrilling final Pac-12 championship game. Tonight, we're looking ahead to who the Huskies could face 
at the next stage. And Chris Egan's tracking that for us. And Chris, we don't know quite yet. Madison, right now, everyone just has to play the waiting game. But uh, good news for Husky fans, uh, you're going to be there. We won't officially know where and who the Huskies will play until tomorrow morning when the College Football Playoff Committee makes the big announcement. And at this hour, only one team is really locked into the Final Four. That is the Washington Huskies. Huskies locked up a spot in the college football playoffs with a big win over the Ducks last night. The Dogs are now 13-0 for the first time in school history. Undefeated Michigan needs to beat Iowa tonight. If they do, they are in. And it will be the Huskies and Wolverines fighting for the number one and number two spots. Why do the Huskies have a chance to jump to number one? Well, because Alabama just threw a major wrench into the playoff picture by beating undefeated Georgia. Georgia was the number one team, but they could actually now drop out of the top four. Alabama wins this game 27 to 24. Keep in mind, Texas beat Alabama at Alabama back in September. Undefeated Florida State is just beginning their game against Louisville. Some college experts think Louisville could hand Florida State their first loss, and that would knock Florida State out. There will be four teams moving on right now. Michigan, Florida State, Texas, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, they're all in the mix. If Michigan and Florida State win, more than likely they're in. The one team we know that will be playing on New Year's Day is the Washington Huskies. The committee will make their final four announcement tomorrow morning. The Huskies have a press conference scheduled for 10.30 a.m. Let's also soak this in tonight. Thanks to that Georgia loss, there is a chance the Huskies could be the number one seed. Well, during this holiday season, we are giving back with your help. Our home team harvest campaign is underway. Our goal is to raise 23 million meals for those in need around Western Washington. One in 12 families in Washington suffers from food insecurity. And through your generosity, we've already raised more than 8 million meals to help them. But we do have a lot more work to do. This morning, we celebrated our in-person donation campaign with our team spread out in Seattle, Everett, Kent, and Paulsbo. Throughout the less newscast we showed you all the ways you can donate and give back this holiday season and the people your donation will help it helps them at school um, they can focus on their work not their bellies we can do it Incredible. Let's give you a bigger picture of where all of this will go. King Fives Drew Andre and Christine Pay spent their morning in Kitsap County. Well, we are here at Fishline Food Bank. This is one of six food banks in Kitsap County. When we were here last week, we noticed there was a line out the door as people were waiting to come in to get their groceries. And they make it real simple here, too. All you need is just a card once you register. And then you come in and check in with one of the lovely st staff members or volunteers here at Fishline. And the whole process is very easy. It's very much like going into your own grocery store to get the items that you need. And to tell us a little bit more about that is Charlie Thompson. You are the executive director of Fishline Food Bank. So tell us about the whole process once they enter. Absolutely. It's like a little grocery store. Uh, they get to shop for themselves. They take what they need. Uh, we have fresh produce available on a daily basis. We have uh, meat. We have dairy products. We have all sorts of things for folks to choose from. And they can grab as much as they want in terms of the perishable foods. That's correct. They can take what they need when it comes to our fresh produce because everyone has different needs. But it's not only uh, food the items that you are offering here at this food bank. What else can you show us? That's right. So we have uh, items in addition to food. Uh, we have non-food items. For instance, over here, we've got our soaps, our toothbrushes, our feminine and hygiene products. Uh, those are all things that people need. And it was a very successful first home team harvest for you as well. Christine, they donated a lot of money. A lot of people came out in the Paulsbo area. Within the past hour alone, this is we, we just got these figures, more than 500 pounds of food. That's incredible. That's right. It's absolutely incredible. People came out and they're really supporting the fish line. In addition to that, I believe it's about $1,180 in, in monetary donations as well. And, you know, people can still help out. How can they help? Absolutely. People can continue to drop off. We're here Monday through Friday. Uh, people can visit our website and they can donate that way as well. A lot of very giving people in the North Kitsap community here that we have noticed in Fishline's first home team harvest. We'll send it back to you. 
Awesome to see the need being met. Again, we need your help raising 23 million meals for a home team harvest food drive. If you're looking for ways to donate, you can scan that QR code on your screen. You can also donate at king5.com slash home team harvest. We'll be right back.